Hi folks, it's George from MV. So we're here today on a chilly November day at Ash's Pond. Ash is a member of our team here at MV and he's got a lovely pond and garden. And in this video, we're gonna try and give you a complete guide to maintaining the sludge levels in your pond. So we do have chapter markers uh, in this video. So if you are more familiar with a certain aspect of this than another, uh, then feel free to skip around. We're gonna start by just explaining what sludge actually is. Now, a lot of people are familiar with things like algae and blanket weed uh, and green water. They're problems that you can really see on the surface of your pond. And um, sludge actually tends to go a little bit more unnoticed because it's submerged right at the bottom as, as a layer of, um, of mud. Um, but what that mud actually is, is things like decaying fish waste, excess fish food, decaying leaves and, and other debris. So if you have a lot of foliage around your pond um, and trees and things like that, you're bound to have leaves fall in there uh, into the pond water and, and they're gonna uh, sink to the bottom and slowly decay uh, and actually add to the buildup of sludge. Same thing with fish food. Um, if there's too much fish food in there, that's gonna sink to the bottom and also start to, to add to that buildup of sludge. So if you do have sludge in your pond, um, it's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, it can actually provide a habitat for some wildlife and some fish actually eat it. So it is actually a food source for them. However, it can get out of hand. So um, if sludge starts to build up, it can become what's known as anaerobic. Uh, so this is where it's going to emit gases and these can be harmful to wildlife and to your fish as well. You'll know if this is happening um, if you can smell uh, rotten eggs. It's, it's not a nice smell at all, it's, it's like a sulfury smell. Um, and that's, that's when you'll know it starts to become, it's starting to become anaerobic. As you may know, algae is a very common problem um, in ponds and inevitably you, there's probably going to be algae spores getting into the pond at some point. So if sludge is already built up and it's not been removed, the sludge is then going to act as a food source for the algae uh, and that's going to thrive. And also things like duckweed, um, which is a very common problem, uh, similar to algae, that's also going to feed off of sludge. So we know that sludge is going to cause some issues if uh, it's left unattended. So what can we do about that? Well, the best way to actually maintain the sludge levels in your pond is to use a bacterial treatment. So we have a product called Sludge Clear, um, which contains billions of beneficial bacteria. Sludge Clear will break up the, the sludge in your pond and move it into the water column. That will then get picked up by your pump and the pump will move it to your filter. So we're now going to briefly explain how to apply sludge clear. It's very straightforward. First of all, you just need to find out exactly how much you need. So you can do this by just getting a rough measurement of the length, the width and the depth of your pond. Then just head over to our pond calculator. Uh, it's very straightforward. Uh, just choose sludge clear as your product. Input your dimensions into the calculator. Click submit and the calculator will tell you exactly how many tablets of Envy Sludge Clear you need to use. Next thing to do is just grab a bucket or watering can of pond water. A watering can is better and you'll see why in a moment. Crumble the amount of Sludge Clear tablets you need into the watering can and give it a good stir. Then ideally you need to leave this watering can for about two hours. This is just going to allow the bacteria in Sludge Clear to activate. So after two hours of being, uh, simply distribute this evenly around the pond. So this is why the watering can is good, because you can really spread it evenly when you're pouring it. Now, it's certainly not a pleasant task, but we really do recommend cleaning your filters uh, when you're using Sludge Clear, because otherwise they are going to start to get clogged up. And by cleaning your filters, you're actually speeding up the process of Sludge Clear massively. You're helping it along. Now, this was a pond that we visited with a really bad case of sludge in the filter. So your pond filter may differ slightly from this. Uh, of course, if you have a much larger pond, the filters will be completely different. So we'd recommend just referring to the instructions in terms of cleaning those types of filters. But for this example, um, this is a fairly common type of filter for uh, an average size pond. So your filter has um, an inlet, uh, three stages of filter media and an outlet. So the first thing you need to do is just turn off the pump because we can't actually clean the filter while the water is still flowing through it. You then just need to hose this first piece of filter media down. Now, a lot of people say, well, is a hose pipe actually going to get rid of the good bacteria in there? And with the case of MB Sludge Clear, there are billions of bacteria in there. And so uh, actually using a hose pipe isn't actually going to remove that much good bacteria. Just repeat this process for the rest of the filter media and then just reassemble the filter. Just pop the uh, filter media back into its uh, correct places. 
In terms of how long it, it takes to clear, it really does depend on how bad the problem is. If the sludge has been left uh, unattended to for a long time, um, it is going to take a lot longer with, with sludge clear. If, if the problem isn't as bad, apply it regularly and you clean the filters, um, you could see results within a couple of weeks. But obviously we can't guarantee um, that, that that's actually going to happen. It does depend on the severity of the, of the sludge problem that you have in your pond. So as we say, it is actually the least invasive method. It's the safest method for your pond and for your fish if you have fish in your pond because you're not going to be disturbing them. You're not going to have to take them out of the pond to do this. It's literally a case of applying sludge clear regularly and cleaning your filters. You're not actually getting in there and really disturbing any wildlife that are in there and actually having your fish disturbed as well. So um, it is definitely using bacteria, using sludge clear is definitely the least invasive method for clearing sludge. So once you start to get some control over the amount of sludge you have in your pond, it's important then to look at ways to prevent it from building up again. So having a, a net is always a good investment. Um, so one like this, for example, whether it covers the, the whole surface of your pond, a net like this, which you would use to then fish the leaves out of the pond. Essentially, you just want to keep as much debris uh, and leaves from getting into the pond water as possible, because as I say, they will uh, submerge down there and eventually add to that buildup of sludge. So the other thing is you, you also want to be careful with how many fish you actually have in your pond. So if it's overstocked with fish, that's not only is it harmful to the fish, but it's also going to, you're going to have a lot more fish waste in the pond, which also adds to, to the buildup of sludge. So this pond's a good example that there are about eight fish in this pond and you could actually add a lot more. So a good rule to follow with this is to, you, you want about 10 gallons of water per inch of fish that you have in the pond. Of course, in addition to these things, um, using sludge clear is going to break down any waste, any debris that's inevitably going to end up in the pond so that it's going to stay at a, a healthy level. So by maintaining the levels of sludge in your pond, you will suppress the growth of, of any algae and blanket weeds. So it is really important. It's a really important aspect of um, maintaining a pond, a healthy pond that does often get overlooked. We do hope this video has given you an insight into to how to maintain the levels of sludge in your pond. If you have any questions, you do feel free to contact us via email, phone, or the live chat on our website, or you can leave a comment below down on this video and uh, we'll be able to help you further.